Hello, hello, everybody. We are going to be continuing our Ace Attorney trilogy journey as we near the end of this trilogy. And hello, YouTube chat. I was just doing some Pokemon Mysteries and Escort missions. Yeah. It was painful due to the multi-hit moves in the Shimmer Hill. I can only imagine. Escort missions are nightmarish. I can only imagine. Especially if multi-hit moves. And the fact that you can't use tactics on a temporary party member. That is the sad thing. They do what they want. Just like actual customers. But. Today. We are going to see if we can be defending Iris the Nun. Because last time. We played as Phoenix until he fell off a bridge that was on fire. And uh, now we're playing as Edgeworth. <laughs> who's just like. I'm meant to be a prosecution attorney, but I've been press ganged into being an, a defender, so let's just hope that nobody realizes who I am. Even though he was like the star prosecutor for years. So let's get off the trial. When it comes to, like, what happened, a lot of things happened. This is a confusing one. Nobody is who they say they are, not even Larry, and we know Larry. <laughs> February 9th, 9.47 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Oh my, Mr. Lloris feels that way about me? Apparently, he isn't aware of your real secret at all. And, of course, right as I start streaming... <laughs> My cat decides, hmm, I want to leave the room now, because I have to close the door. always right when I sleep. I do anything else in this room. And he's just like, I'm gonna sleep under your desk. The moment I start streaming, he's like, yeah, you talk too much, Leaves. But apparently, he isn't aware of your real secret at all. <laughs> this is no time to be embarrassed! Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I guess you are on trial for murder. Your life's at stake. Not really the time to be embarrassed, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, cats. I know who they are. <laughs> Animals. I'm just hardly accustomed to that sort of thing. Worry not. And in any case, whatever it was that he saw on the night of the incident, mark my words, I will drag it out of him. Does that mean Mr. Loris is the witness today? No. I believe that nun will be the first to take the stand. Sister Bikini... She claims to have seen the very instant in which you carried out the crime. I... <clears throat> For a moment there, I thought she was going to talk. Because she keeps going between, like, dot, dot, dots, talking, dot, dot, dots. I just want to ask you one last time. It really wasn't you who killed Miss Elise Dunham, correct? That is correct. It wasn't me. Very well, then. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes? You are a prosecutor, aren't you? Are you sure about this? If your true identity is revealed... Don't worry. I've made the necessary arrangements. I see. Iris, it is a prosecutor's job to doubt people. But right now, I'm a defense attorney. A defense attorney's job is to believe in people, and to believe until the bitter end. And that's what my friend told me once. Mr. Edgeworth... I simply ask that you watch and decide for yourself whether or not I am fit to do the task I have been entrusted. Very well, sir. I leave my defense in your capable hands. Who is the judge going to be? Is it going to be the big old guy from, like, the initial thing? The first one? Like, the Canadian man? Which is, it's kind of funny. We've, we, we haven't had our original judge in quite a while. I think it is. It is the Canadian guy. Court is now in session for the trial of Sister Iris of Hazakura Temple. The defense is ready, Your Honor. 
The defense does indeed appear to be ready. However, the same cannot be said for the prosecution in this case. Indeed. I'm not sure I like such a blatant waste of this court's time. An empty prosecutor's chair can only mean that the prosecutor has no confidence in their ability to prove their case. Is this where Godot is gonna wa waltz on in? Because who is the prosecutor gonna be? Like, who is he aiming for, is the question. It would seem this case is already over before it had a chance to begin. I'm ready to announce my verdict at this time. This court finds the defendant. Oh no, it is her. It is the whip lady. Franziska von Karma. The prosecution stands ready. Uh, and you are? Franziska von Karma, prosecuting prodigy. V von Karma, you say? Perchance you wouldn't be of any relation to the legendary prosecutor Manfred von Karma. Legends are a thing of the past. I am a von Karma, that is all. Upon a special request, I flew in today for the purpose of prosecuting this case. You did? Then you must be quite a big shot, eh? By the way, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor? I'm almost certain that I've seen you somewhere before. Or am I just imagining things? You look very much like a prosecutor I met once. Nah, that prosecutor was much more, like, anime bishy sparkles kind of guy. I believe you are imagining things, Your Honor. Miss Von Karma, do you have anything to say? There is no such weakling as this man among those at the prosecutor's office. That there isn't. But I'm sure. It's before in this courtroom. Ah! I told you there is no such weakling! But what is that, a whip? I'm not sure I care for this thing in my courtroom. Bailiff, remove that whip at... I have no objection to the whip. Y you don't? The prosecution can wield a whip or drink 17 cups of coffee. I completely butchered the flow of that sentence. The prosecution can wield a whip or drink 17 cups of coffee. But there is still only one truth. And that is what I stand here to prove today. This promises to be interesting, Miles Edgeworth. I'd expected to face Phoenix right here today. But I, uh, looking at you now, maybe this is what I've been waiting for all this time. Miles Edgeworth, I will not allow this chance to crush you slip through my fingers. I see you brought your flair for the histronic. Allow me to add to the things I'm not sure about. People acting bizarrely in my court. Go oh, ah! on! The stage is set. Now continue with your proceedings, Your Honor. Very well, Miss Von Karma. Please give an outline of the case. With as little whipping as possible. The murder victim of the famed picture book, Arthur, Miss Elise Dunham. Oh, Jesus. How did, the, how did this happen? How did this happen? How do you stab somebody and then put the sword back in the statue like that? This makes no sense. Jesus. Her body was found in the Hasakura Temple Courtyard. She had been stabbed through the torso by a ceremonial sword from a golden statue. The sword in this picture. Is the weapon in question correct? Very well. The court accepts this photo of the crime scene. Crime photo added to the courtroom. The courtyard where Elise Dunham was murdered. I still have no idea how to pronounce that name. There is no mistake. This was the doing of Sister Iris. After all, there is a witness to her crime. Very well. Please bring this witness to the stand. And so it begins. My first and last trial. As a defense attorney. <laughs> She's so short. Witness, state your name and occupation, please. Hold on here. I'm not sure about being... I'm not sure if I care for this at all. Witness, please stand up nice and straight. <laughs> if I recall correctly, there are a few milk crates in the defendant's lobby for our back pain plagued witness. Bailiff, fetch a crate for this poor lady, please. Once again, your name and occupation, please. Little old me, well, I'm the... I for completely forget what kind of voice I gave you. 
Well, I'm the head nun of Hasakura Temple on Eagle Mountain. My name is Bikini. You get it? Bikini. Nice to meet everyone. But you don't appear to be wearing a bikini right now. What? The courtroom is the garden of holy judgment. Those with lechery in their heart should leave the sanctuary at once. You want me to leave? No need to get your bikinis in a twist. Let me tell you, I'm a sight to behold in summer. A milk crate isn't stable. Well, obviously they are in japan <laughs> In any case, witness, I hear that you saw the crime take place on the night in question. And that's right. I can still hardly believe it myself, to be honest. There's no way dear little Iris could do anything like that. Let us hear what you have to say, then. First, tell us about your own movements that night, eh? He is Canadian. <laughs> the, the, the A could be anything, but once you throw in a boot in there, you, you become Canadian. I also like that they set this guy up before because he's also the judge that we interrupted a trial for in the Mask to Mask case. I like it. I like that this game is like interweaving things. That night I was helping an acolyte with her training in the Inner Temple. We know that to be true. But, well, as you can see, my back likes to act up violently. So I left Iris to help the acolyte and return to the Hasakura Temple. There's no bath in the Inner Temple, you see, and I needed a long, hot soak. It was after I'd finished, just as I was heading back, that's when I saw it! Hmm. So it was simply coincidence that you found yourself returning to Azakura Temple. Yes, you could say that. If my back hadn't been in so much pain, I would have stayed at the Inner Temple. And that sounds like a pretty important statement she just made. There's only one problem with the testimony that I can see. And you're not about to fall at the first hurdle now, are you, Miles Edgeworth? Mr. Edgeworth, please begin your cross-examination. That was a very quick one. A quick witness testimony. It's probably going to be drawn out. Uh, as always, save. That night I was helping Nacklight with her training. Well, let's go ahead and press, since we haven't been given any... Hey, if you, if you press too much, we're going to piss on your face. Don't like those. <laughs> Especially if they don't come out and clearly tell you. What is this inner temple? Well, see, conversing with the spirits is what we train people to do, right? We'll be the ones asking you the questions, madam. In order to do that, a place strong in spiritual power is required. There's a small temple across Dusky Bridge called the Inner Temple. Acolytes must spend an entire night there to undergo intense training. And how exactly do you help with the process? It is all quite exacting. It can't be performed without a nun supervising. Like a tutor watching to make sure a spoiled child studies. If I remember correctly, the head nun is not supposed to leave the training grounds. Huh. I don't think that's ever been stated for this one. Then again, I could be misremembering because it if they did say it, it could have been a single throwaway. But who knows? A tutor with a whip in your case. If that is the case, then why did you return to Hazakura Temple where the murder took place? We move on. Violently. That's right. It's no laughing matter, especially in winter. I can't hold anything heavier than a knife and fork during the cold months. Just being alive is like strict training. <laughs> On the night of the murder, was this fabulous back of yours hurting again? That's right. Raging like a bull in a pig pen, I almost fainted once or twice. I just knew that unless I warmed it up, I was going to finally finish me off. So I left Iris to help the Acolyte and return to Hazakura Temple. You left Iris to help? With what? What do you think? The Acolyte's training, of course. It was just past 10 p.m., so we were starting to enter into the training exercises proper. Wasn't it your place to remain then with the Disciple? Well, the job is simply... The job? The job is simply to watch over the Acolyte so they don't pass away. Just to confirm this point again, that night, you met Iris in the Inner Temple, correct? Yes, yes, she's a gentle, honest girl. She's never once failed to follow my directions. I'm going to guess that that's where I bring in, like, Iris' testimony, more than likely. But let's keep pressing, because we might get information. 
So you return to the Hazakura Temple in order to take a bath. My back is to blame for everything. It's a do-or-be-done-in kind of world, after all. How long were you in the bath for, if you don't mind me asking? My, 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 what a filthy little rogue you are. I know it's on your mind. Huh? I bet your next question is going to be, where exactly did you wash? Ah, this is why you have to watch the young ones. What are you going on about? I was... Ah! Pathetic, Miles Edgeworth. The lowest of the low. Is there some sort of kick we sign stuck to the defense bench? <laughs> I like that he's acknowledging that Phoenix got hit, gets just absolutely annihilated there. Anyway, I couldn't afford to be away from my post for too long, you understand, so... It was after I'd finished, I was just heading back, that's when I saw it! The crime tape took place in the courtyard, correct? And when you go from my room to the main hall, you have to take a winding hallway from which you can see the courtyard. That's right. In other words, it was pure coincidence that the witness saw the crime taking place before her eyes. There was no complicated setup in this case. Hmm. That certainly seems to be true. There is indeed only one problem with this testimony. If I can clearly point out what it is, then I can begin to quantify just how good this witness's memory and observation skills are. So I left Iris to help. We're going to present Iris's testimony. Objection! Objection! Witnesses have to undergo their own trials, I'm afraid. The defendant's fate rests on their powers of observation and memory, after all. Well, well, well. Uh, don't worry. I'm more than up to the task. I'm a woman of faith, after all. The head honcho of Hazakura Temple. In that case, Miss Honcho, I'd like you to explain something for me. The discrepancy between your testimony and that of the defendant, Iris. She claims that after ringing the lights out bell, she went back and stayed in her room. Which means she did not go to the inner temple at all. Uh, no, she said that. A defendant or a witness? Who is more likely to lie, do you suppose? The defendant is simply lying to cover her back. But that is completely illogical. The murder was committed in the courtyard of Hazakura Temple. Claiming that she went to the inner temple would make for a much better alibi. But that is odd. Whatever the reason, I can't believe that she would lie. Hmm. She does indeed have honest eyes. What? All people lie. That is my belief. Why am I the only one being whipped in here? I just got whipped, Mr. Judge. Anyway, neither the witness nor the defendant have any reason to lie. Which means we must call your memory into question. Dear, dear, dear. You're older than me, and yet you want to play that game, do you? Uh, uh, well, that isn't exactly what I... My memory is perfect crystal clear, especially in winter. Then, I suppose it's too early to end this cross-examination, eh? Mr. Edgeworth, if you are going to question the memory of this witness, you will need to show me a more decisive piece of evidence. Understood, Your Honor. I was naive to think that alone would do the trick. Then please add your comments about Iris to the testimony, and let us return to the cross-examination. That night, I was helping an acolyte. Well, my back Iris came to the inner temple. She was dressed exactly as she'd been at dinner. <laughs> We're gonna press on that, because I think I know exactly how to diddly do smack you. Are you sure that you're not making a mistake? You, young man, need to get your estimation of me up from the floor. <laughs> Iris always wears the same clothes. The smallest thing out of place would have stood out like a sore thumb to me. You're making a mistake. Thinking I made a mistake? An excellent finish there, witness. Still, I have to wonder. Because she gave her hood to Phoenix. Witness, let's get one thing straight. The defendant whom you claim to have met, she was wearing this demon warding hood, correct? Of course. That is a very important piece of clothing, I'll have you know. <laughs> the vial? What vial? Do we have a vial? We don't have a vial. But yeah. We know that Iris wasn't wearing the hood. 
So what are you on about, lady? Or, or did you never actually see Iris and you're just assuming? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, I meant the hood. Oh, veil. You meant veil. Yeah, under definitely. But that was hilarious. That she was just like, Haha, I'm sure. Wait a minute. Hold it right there. Why do you have that? There's the question of the day now, isn't it, Miss Von Karma? I'll have you know that this hood was given to someone as a gift that night, before the lights out bell was rung. W what? You know where I'm going with this, don't you? If the witness had seen the defendant as she claims, then the iris she saw should have been missing this very hood. Well, well, well. <laughs> That's a lot of crates. It's not, not a bad feeling at all, exposing contradictions like this. I understand that happy look on Wright's face every time he does it. Order! Order in the court! Sister, this hood. You have a spare ones around the temple, don't you? Spares? Well, I do tend to make too many of them. My see, a stockpile, a surplus of hoods, eh? Each nun is only given one hood, and this should be the only hood that Iris owned. Hmm, then this is quite strange. Blah! If there was a surplus of hoods, then she could have won, won one of those. There's no contradiction here. Hmm. I'm sorry to break this to you, Miss Von Karma, but you won't get away that easily. Discrepancies such as this will sow seeds in any human heart. The seeds of doubt. Witness, while I don't wish to call your testimony into doubt, you must give every detail with precision. I I'm not sure I'm comfortable going along with this. Sister, you shall continue with your testimony. Tell us what you saw after finishing your bath on your way back to the inner temple. Those seeds of doubt are sprouting in the judge's heart. They just need a little more stimulation to bear fruit. Contradictory stimulation. I like, I like Defendant, <laughs> Defendant Edgeworth. I finished my bath around 11 and I thought I should return to the inner temple. So you at, so kind of around 10, you went to the inner temple. At some point afterwards, you return. When was the murder? 10 to 11. I mean, I guess it's since around 11, makes sense. And as I was walking back, I heard a noise from the courtyard. I took a look and Iris was, oh, Mystic Elise, and with that sword of all things. Mystic Elise was staying in the corner room, which faces out into the courtyard. The stabbing I saw must have occurred after she was pushed out of her window. You think we would have investigated her room where she was pushed out of, if that happened. You saw a truly terrible sight, didn't you? If I was in your place, then it would be much like Miss Von Combo would be Mr. Edgeworth and two in court. And me seeing it all from this very chair. <laughs> uh, well, something like that. This judge, his imagination is about as vivid and creative as Detective Gumshoe. I would look the fool if I commented on such foolishness. Anyway, this case is mine, Miles Edgeworth. Calling everyone by their full name. Could you do something about that habit of yours? <laughs> I like it. I like this. I like that they took an opportunity to s flip things around. I finished my bath around 11. How far is it from your room to the inner temple? Let me think a moment. About 20 minutes on these stumps of mine. It's about 15 minutes to Dusky Bridge from Hazakura Temple. The inner temple is just beyond the bridge. Still, you never made it back there that night, did you? Th that's right. I was heading along the walkway towards the main hall. So yeah, it's a 20 minute walk there and back. That's a, l a long time. And as I was walking back, I heard the noise in the courtyard. Wouldn't you have heard the pushing out? You say you heard a noise. Thump! Just like that. That could only be the sound of the victim falling. Fair enough. It's very quiet in the temple, you know. You can even hear the snow falling from the branches. Thump! Just like that. But then, couldn't this noise you heard have been snow falling to the ground? 
I never thought of that. <laughs> the next one to laugh gets a whipping. Well, whatever the source of the sound, I looked over at the courtyard and... Hers was, oh, Mystic Elise. This is the second time that the witnesses testify to seeing the defendant, but some doubt remains in these claims. Hey, just what does that mean? Just because you're a good-looking young man doesn't give you the right to... The murderer who stabbed the victim with the sword, Sister Bikini, tried to recall exactly who it was you saw, as clearly as you can. Hmm. Well, you're a handsome young man, so I'll forgive you. Oh, now that you mention it, there was something awfully strange about her. Something that has been bugging me all this time. Please, don't keep us in suspense. Her hood! Her hood? That's right, it's coming back to me! Iris, she wasn't wearing her hood! Well, that's bad for us. I thought something was out of place, but it all makes sense now, doesn't it? After all, she'd be giving that hood away to someone, right? Gag it! Ha! You've dug your own grave, Miles Edgeworth. What do you say, Mr. Edgeworth? Is this testimony important? Hmm. Like, it's interesting that he's asking me. But, like, it has to be important, right? Even though it is, like... Kind of flying against us. Shouldn't we like want to add it to the thing so that we can actually like schmiggity schmack it? So I'm trying to think. Ba ba ba. <laughs> Whenever I come to these things, I just completely go walk, 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 walk. Hmm trying to think because it feels like something that would be important to add it's playing the music hmm so I'm just trying I'm trying I'm trying to bibbity bop because just like it feels like it is important but it almost feels like if I say it's not important Von Karma will be like oh evil bleh so I don't know I don't know. I honestly don't know. Because it feels important. But at the same time, Von Karma was like, Oh, there was a stockpile of hoods, so it doesn't matter. I'm just trying to think. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Hmm. Again, this this feels important, but we're supposed to be Edgeworth. We're going for the truth. I'm trying to think. I guess it's important. This may initially appear to put me at a disadvantage, but I can't see any other leads at this moment. Your Honor, I would like this new statement to be added to the testimony. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth, if you want to hang yourself, you need only ask. I'll gladly lend you my whip. Witness, add that statement to your testimony. No problem. Mr. Galise is staying on the corner of her room, which faces the courtyard. I don't think we need to press on that. Hmm. Let's press on this. What makes you so sure of all this? It's just like I told you earlier. I heard a noise from the courtyard, okay? Thump! Just like that. You're one smart sister, I'll give you that. The autopsy report states that the victim's body was covered in bruises, indicating a fall from around 10 feet in height. Hmm. It appears that the witness was not mistaken then. Yep, yep. I'm more than just a pretty face, especially in winter. I'm a woman of faith after all, the head honcho of Hazakura Temple. There's only two of them working there. What's wrong, Miles Edgeworth? No snappy comeback remark? It doesn't feel like she's lying. This is a very powerful testimony, too. She claims to have seen the instant in which the defendant stabbed the victim. There are only two things I can believe right now. 
my client Iris, and my own abilities as a defense attorney. Hmm. I mean, I could press on that, but it also feels like the stabbing I saw must have occurred after she was pushed out the window. And this is all happening... Oh, like, I finished my bath around 11. Hmm. Around 11. Like, would that be important to this? Because the time of death was 10 to 11. Hmm. So I'm trying to think. Hmm. Time, 10 11 to 11 p.m. Cause, loss of blood from stabbing back. Body fell 10 feet after... After death. What? 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 Hit what? You did. Shouldn't. Shouldn't we have the coroner come up here at some point and tell us exactly the state of death? I mean, that. It's just like. Um. Stabbing must have occurred after she was pushed out the window. That couldn't be because the autopsy says it was the body. What? Wouldn't like a 20 mi uh, minute walk be like two miles? Maybe. I have no idea. Then again. Well, actually, come to think of it. If Sister Bikini has a bad back, really it shouldn't have taken her longer because I believe both Maya and Phoenix also took 20 minutes to walk that. So either the victim screamed loud enough for the for a rock concert, but she didn't hear the scream or like thump from the bridge. She heard the thump while she was in the temple near the courtyard. But yeah, we're gonna present this because uh, uh, the stabbing couldn't have happened after she was pushed out the window because the body fell 10 feet after death. Again, that feels very, very important. Objection. Impressive logic. That's what I'd like to say anyway. Oh, please do. My brain is something else, especially in winter. Remember to drink your tea, everybody. When we're about to spill it on this nun. However, I think you are overlooking one thing. Miss Von Karma, would you be so kind as to take another look at the autopsy report? The, the autopsy report? Yes, I've updated it. Fuck you. The victim did fall from a height of ten feet. However, this fall was after she was killed. Ah, that's right. It says after death right there. The scene the witness claims to have seen is contradictory. If the defendant stabbed and killed the victim there in the courtyard, how did the victim then go on to take a ten-foot fall? Uh, order! Order! The victim was killed and then fell. If that is the case, then the victim must have been killed in her room. Don't you agree? Th that is logical conclusion. Yes, that's right. The victim must have been stabbed by the defendant in her own room, and she was then thrown out her window down to the courtyard below. Were there any signs of a struggle in Miss Denham's room? She was stabbed with a sword. That would leave a blood stain, wouldn't you agree? Well, Miss Von Karma, was there any blood? Blah! No traces of blood were found in the victim's room. Your whip has just caused traces of blood to be found on my glorious playoff beard. However, if there was no blood in her room, then you'll claim- What? I'm sure there's no need for me to go over this, as I'm sure your honor is well aware of when a stab wound produces the most blood. When it produces the most blood? Very little blood is actually lost at the moment of a blade's insertion. If you want to talk about when the most blood would be lost from a body, that would be when the blade is removed. Indeed, when the weapon is still in place, it acts like a lid on the wound. That's true. With the weapon still in the body, there wouldn't be much bleeding. A perfectly reasonable line of thinking. But the picture. The blade was still in there. Well, I guess that's kind of the point. We have come to a conclusion, then. The victim was thrown out of the window with the sword still in place. 
This removes all the contradictions. Does it though? Does it though? Because it. I don't think it does. Order! 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 I must admit that this is a probable aversion of events. I'd expect no less from Franziska von Karma. She locates and takes control of every vital point. Hmm. It seems that we need a clearer testimony from the witness. Remove all supposition on your part and tell us only the facts, please. Witness, please! Remain standing on the crate! Don't go selling me short now. The weight of winter snow has bent me out of shape, especially my back and my mood. Sister, please give us your testimony. I will give you a vigorous massage once we are finished here. With the whip? <laughs> oh, boy. All right, all right. Further details. When I looked across the scene, the sword was already in place. Thinking about it now, I didn't actually see her stab Mr. Elise. I've never seen so much blood before. That's when I fainted. You can't blame me, can you? And when I awoke, Mr. Kami was... stabbing Mr. Elise through the back. Hmm. This all confirms Miss Von Karma's theory. Von Karma strive for nothing but perfection. Putting together such facts is nothing for me. You should know that, Miles Edgeworth. Perfection is an impossibility, Franziska von Karma, and I'm here to teach you just that. It's a remedial course after you failed perfection against Phoenix Wright. At that time, was the victim bleeding? Well, I was very shocked to be seeing all this, of course, so I'm not entirely sure. But I don't think I saw any blood. Not then. I'm sure that you didn't. The weapon was acting as a plug in the wound. In any case, let's be clear on one very important point. Did you actually see the instant in which the victim was stabbed? Thinking about it now, I didn't actually see her stab, Mr. Elise. Thinking carefully. This is very important. It's Iris we're talking about here. I'm thinking for all I'm worth. No, when I looked it over, the sword was already in Mystic Elise's body. Hmm. It might not be conclusive, but this testimony supports a theory. The victim was stabbed in the room and then dropped into the courtyard. I think this proves it rather well, Miles Edgeworth. But the photo, right? The crime scene photo. The sword is being held by the statue. And there is blood like surrounding. Hmm. I've never seen so much blood before. So you're saying that you saw the victim's blood? Th th that's right! Uh, some of it had splattered onto Iris, too. When the defendant was arrested, she was meditating in her room, and her blood flecked clothing was neatly folded in the corner. B what? Her clothes were blood flecked as well? Hmm. That seems quite conclusive to me. What should I do? Press the point even further? I feel like that would be important because... It feels like that would be very, very important. Let's press further. Going back to your previous statement, you said that you saw little bleeding when the victim was stabbed. But now you say you saw the victim bleeding. Well, well, I say that what I saw is what I saw. B what did you see? Maybe I didn't see the poor woman get stabbed. But I saw the girl pull the sword out of her, plain as day. Pulling the sword out? Well, it wasn't exactly pulling. It was more like it came out. Witness, you will add this statement to your testimony. Oh, was that important? More important than you can imagine. Hmm. I saw the instant in which the blade plunged into the... In the hilt to the... Uh, plunged in the hip. Whoa, what... The blade plunged into the hilt was smoothly drawn out. That's completely wrong. It wasn't to the hilt at all. It wasn't to the hilt at all. I feel like I need to just automatically throw the shishishito at you for that. It's not, it wasn't to the hilt at all. Even in your memory. Sister Bikini, you are a reliable witness. At least I'd like to think so. But there are too many contradictions here. What do you mean? You make it sound as though I'm a liar. But... You're a handsome young man, so I'll forgive you. Which contradictions are you talking about? 
In the scene that the witness claims to have seen, the weapon was thrust up to the hilt in the victim. Well, I guess it was up to the hilt in that one. But again, it's in the statue's hand, and yeah, I, I, I completely misremembered that, but I got it to the right point. So the plot thickens. Indeed. Is it possible that, like, somebody dressed up as Iris and stabbed... No, but, but the body would have... I don't know. She was already dead. I don't know. This has to be a complete fabrication, then, because there was no way for Miss Elise to react to being stabbed because she was already dead. Well, then again, I suppose if you were pulling the sword out, her jaw would be flopping about. The weapon was thrust up to its hilt into the victim, but no, that can't be because, again, here it's shown up to the hilt, but the blood didn't go all the way up. Furthermore, the killer withdrew the weapon smoothly from the body. However, both of these are complete impossibilities. What do you mean? Please explain you- <laughs> Explain yourself! To start with, do you think it would be possible to stab someone to the hilt with this? That's one thing that I didn't believe at all, there's too many curves in it. No matter how I look at the defendant, she doesn't appear strong enough for that. Doesn't appear with meaningless dribble. I too may appear to be weak and frail, but I can crush men under my heel and make them weep should I so choose. The objection stands. I wept a little back there, I must admit. That isn't the only issue here. If this sword was truly stabbed into the body up to the hilt, well, just look at all the branches on it. It certainly wouldn't come out smoothly. That's... We also have the problem of the amount of bleeding. It's true that when a blade is left in the body, it acts as a plug of sorts. However, when the weapon is shaped like this, it's an entirely different story. The wound would be too large for the blade to completely stop the bleeding. Especially if it went up to the hilt, because one, two, three, four, five, six little branches would have gone completely through the body, making too big of holes to be plugged by the hilt. That's nothing more than conjecture. In reality, the victim is stabbed with the shishito. Even the weapon of this nature may still sometimes slide out smoothly and may still sometimes stop the blood loss. I'm not finished. There's still one more conclusive contradiction. You've still got more? This one is simple. If this sword really was thrust in all the way to the hilt, where's the blood? <laughs> yeah, it would be sloppy to yank out indeed. Why is there only blood on the tip of it? Ah! Uh if this witness is telling the truth, then there should be blood along the entire length of the sword. No! I love the music in this game. Order! Order! Ah! Brother Miles Edgeworth, raising this many contradictions from a single piece of evidence. All the other attorneys I know could maybe manage one, if that. But what does this all mean? You have proven contradictions regarding the murder weapon, but... Having come this far, there can be only one answer. And that is... The weapon used to kill the victim was not the Shishi Chito. What? A foolishly foolish idea born from the foolish mind of a foolhardy foolish fool. Let's examine this again. What was it that made us think that this sword was the murder weapon? Well, it's because Mr. Kami was holding it. Exactly. However, if you reflect on this, that is the only basis we have to assume such a thing. The impression left by the scene was just too strong. That is what influenced us. It influenced us to believe that the Shishi... Chi Chi Shito was the murder weapon. Order! 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 Ah! So maybe the Shishi Chito was not the murder weapon. Even if that is the case, it changes nothing, Miles Edgeworth. The sister here saw everything. She saw the defendant stab the victim with a sword-like object. No, she changed her testimony to she only saw the defendant take the sword out. Hmm, that's true. Your response, Mr. Edgeworth. 
If that is so, I would like the prosecution to answer the obvious question it raises. The obvious question? Yes, namely, where did the real murder weapon disappear to? It goes without saying that the police searched the main hall and the surrounding area. Perhaps the prosecution can enlighten us as to if a sword-like object was found. That's... Answer the question, Miss Von Karma! No evidence of that kind was found. Also, the wound would be impossible to stitch together, I think. Well, it wouldn't really matter too much about stitching together at that point. Because... But it's just weird. Because even if somebody came along and stabbed Elise and threw her out the window... It's still odd that Bikini said that she saw the sword up to the hilt come out smoothly. This also leads me to think that maybe the murder weapon is hidden at the inner temple? Because the time of death for Mystic Elise is 10 to 11. And she died before being thrown out the window. The only thing I can think of is that somebody came along, stabbed Elise, threw her out the window, then, like, maybe stabbed her dead body with the sword? The Shishishito? And then maybe Elise came along and saw the body and pulled the sword out? But then that would also mean that she would have had to re-stab the body and put the sword back in hand of the statue. It's just very weird. Hmm. Another mystery to throw onto the pile. A trail without a murder weapon is tricky beast. Excuse me, could I say something? I just remembered something, actually. What is it, sister? I was just thinking, it's possible that just maybe... What actually happened was, it was just over there. What exactly are you going on the boot here? The murder weapon, I mean. Maybe, I think I might know where the sword was disposed of. You what? Well then, I think we need to hear testimony from you one more time, sister. Impossible. What else? What else could this old woman have seen? Location of the weapon. I saw the murder at around 11 p.m. You couldn't have because she was stabbed in a room, killed, and then thrown out a window. You could not have seen the murder. And after asking that it, uh, that it be reported, I went out to the main gate. You did not do that. You passed out, got stepped on by Phoenix, and told them to report it. And there I saw tracks. Tracks that indicated the snowmobile had been used. So that's how they're going to stitch it together. So maybe I'm right, and the weapon was taken to the inner temple. It takes 15 minutes to walk to Dusky Bridge, but less than five using one of those. Maybe they threw the weapon into Eagle River and came back when I was knocked out. Iris could have done that. She can drive a snowmobile after all. And both the phone... And the snowmobile were used because of the lack of snow. Hmm. Witness, please tell us everything you know right away next time. Well, I'm not in the best of shape, but my back and my age, you know. Quite. There were indeed snowmobile tracks in front of the main gate. Here's a photograph. But that... That's completely wrong because that's snowmobile tracks of the snowmobile coming back. Hmm. I'll have to look at the photo in totality after the comment comment. A snowmobile, eh? I see. Well, it certainly is an interesting theory. And plus, we can see that the snowmobile was put back. Like, yeah, there's no exit tracks, only entry tracks. The tracks begin in front of Hazakura Temple and run all the way to Dusky Bridge. 
That solves your pesky little problem, yes? The Eagle River's current is quite swift, meaning that it doesn't freeze over in winter. Making it the perfect place to dispose of the murder weapon. Would she really go to the river to dispose of the murder weapon? Mr. Edgeworth, your cross-examination, please. I think I already know maybe where to go with this, because the tracks are entering, not leaving. And they seem to cross over with the footprints going in to the temple. I saw the murder around 11. I don't think we need to press that. And after asking the report, I went to the main gate. You asked Phoenix Wright to report the crime, correct? Right, right, right. The, the one who trampled me. It seems she is the type to hold a grudge. There isn't a phone in the main hall, so I sent him to the bridge. Could maybe it be that Phoenix used the... Used the... No, because the snowmobile came back in. Phoenix doesn't seem like the type to be able to drive one. There is a phone, so I sent him to the bridge. Phoenix Wright, he didn't even have his cell phone on him. He had forgotten it at home, apparently. What a naive boy, as always. Not only do I always carry my phone, but I always have my whip in hand, too. Anyway, I was really scared, and it was taking him a while to get back, so I thought I'd go out by the main gate for a spell. And there, they saw tracks! Tracks that indicate the snowmobile had been used! As I recall, there was a snowmobile outside the main gate when I visited. That's it. That's the only one we have. It'll run no matter how much snow falls. Now, you're certain the snowmobile was there at the main gate when you arrived? Yes, of course. It was parked in front of the gate. So, she had already gone, discarded the murder weapon, and returned by that time. I'm not sure if this is really relevant. What should I do? It does feel like we should press further, because even if it takes less than five minutes to get there by snowmobile... I could dead enough. Things feel important. Hmm. But at the same time, I don't think there's much that we can really gather from this, I don't think. Mm, we can always come back if we don't find something. It doesn't feel as decisive to press further on that. Looks very likely that the snowmobile is related to the case. I can't help but think that Iris used it. But for what? I better hold off on this for now. Well then, witness, for how long does it take to reach the bridge by snowmobile? It takes 15 minutes to walk to Dusky Bridge, but less than five using one of those. Hmm, do we want to press on this? Do we want to press on this? Hmm. Well, hmm. Maybe they threw the weapon into Eagle River and came back. Iris could have done that. She can drive the snowmobile. The only thing that really, well, because again, it is obviously snowmobile tracks coming in, and they overlap with the footprints, and if we take this to mean that those are the footprints of Sister Bikini going in to the temple, hmm. and came back while I was knocked out. I'm going to present, because I feel like... It feels weird, but I feel like this is an important thing. Objection! I feel like... I just feel it. I feel it. The tracks, they weird me out, man. I admit this photograph proves something. It proves that the snowmobile was used on the night of the murder. You finally accepted the inevitable, it seems, Miles Edgeworth. However, if what the witness says is true, then why is there only one set of tracks? What do you mean? Iris left Hazakura Temple, threw the weapon into the river, and then returned. If this was the case, then naturally there should be two sets of tracks in the snow. Those from heading out to the bridge, and those from coming back. Ah, you're right. <laughs> Oddly, didn't really get to Von Karma that much. Remember, as we spill the, tree, uh, spill the tea, remember to drink it, so we don't waste the tea. You are forgetting one thing, Miles Edgeworth. On the night of the murder, it was snowing. The tracks leading to the bridge were erased by the snowfall. This removes your precious contradiction now, doesn't it? 
I see. While she was at the river, the snow stopped, leaving just the return tracks in the snow. But then the footprints, those should also be gone. Should they not? But you have to say now, Mousedsworth. Is there a flaw in her theory? This idea that the snowfall covered one set of tracks. Let's look at my evidence just to be safe. Not relevant, not relevant, not relevant, not relevant, not relevant, not relevant. Weather data. That could be important. Snow with occasional lightning strikes. Snow 7 to approximately 1050. Lightning 10 to approximately 11. Lightning struck Dusky Bridge at 1045. Around 30 minutes passed between the fire starting and going out. Hmm. Snow 7 to approximately 1050. So yeah, if she says it was around 11 when she saw the murder, there should be two tracks. There is a contradiction! The tracks to the river were covered by snow, what a nice theory. However, Miss Von Karma, that is impossible. Would you care to explain why there is a rude index finger currently pointed in my general direction? No need. The evidence will do all the talking for me. On the night of the murder, the killer went to and returned from Dusky Bridge in order to dispose of the murder weapon. The outgoing tracks were erased by snow, or so claims Miss Von Karma. Mr. Edgeworth, present your evidence to the contrary, eh? Evidence that the outgoing tracks were not covered in snow. Weather well, data. Witness, please tell us again what time it was when you witnessed the crime. Like I said, it was around 11. Of course. This means that the weapon was thrown away after that time, correct? On that note, please take a look at this data. It is the weather report for Eagle Mountain on the night of the murder. The weather report? Snow started to fall at 7 p.m., but it stopped at around 10.50. Therefore, when the sister witnessed the crime at 11 p.m., the snow had already stopped falling. It is impossible for any tracks made after that time to have been covered up. Gah! Uh, order! Order! Very well, then. It looks like Miss Von Karma's claim has been snowed in. Gah! It's too soon to be closing this trial due to snow. Miles Edgeworth, how pathetic of you to rely on the weather of all things. Answer me this then. When is a weather report ever correct? Ah, uh, no, 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 you've got it all wrong. This isn't a forecast, this is actual data. Gah! Forecast data, all weather reports have inaccuracies. It may have still been snowing at the vicinity well past 11 p.m. Hmm, it's true, we cannot be totally sure, eh? But what? How did she pull that off? It had stopped snowing at Hazakura Temple when the murder took place. You need to provide conclusive evidence of this. I've come this far. There's no turning back now. Very well. I, too, cannot allow any doubt to remain concerning this testimony. Ha! Huh. You can't back down, can you? Such a perfectionist, Miles Edgeworth. Very well then, Mr. Edgeworth. Where is your evidence that it already stopped snowing when the victim was killed? Uh, like, it has to be the tracks photo again, can't it? Right? Because she said something like, the weather report is inaccurate. Oh, yeah. If the weather report was inaccurate and it was still snowing past 11, then how are there tracks at all? Your response, Miss Von Karma. It looks like... Oh, what? It's still snowing in your heart, too. Shivering in the cold like um, you are closing your eyes to the truth. But I was right. This, there couldn't be tracks if it, was, if it was still snowing. And to think you just arrived after a long, tiring flight from Germany. That was poetry. Pure poetry. But I was correct, damn you. This evidence is only going to freeze my case solid. Respond, my Edgeworth. Even if it wasn't snowing in my heart, at the time of the murder, it already stopped snowing at Hazakura Temple. Very well then, Mr. Edgeworth. Like it had to be. 
All right, let's go for the rest of it. Because well, I feel, well, because I feel like that had to have been it. Because if it, because they're arguing that it was still snowing at the time of the murder. Which means, or like, but I guess that, I don't know. It feels kind of wonky that they're like, well, you see, our hypothesis that it had stopped snowing only after they halfway got to the ski bridge, threw the weapon off, and came back. That's realistic. But you having weather data that it stopped snowing at that specific time, oh, that's wrong. This is the day Edgeworth realized that Phoenix's job sucks, don't it? Let's see. Let's go through all the evidence related to snow. No snow, no snow, no snow, no snow, no snow. Weather data, they don't care. No snow. Photo of Elise, nope. Not relevant. Ours testimony, not relevant. Autopsy, not relevant. Crime photo. And what is the wording again? Where is your evidence that it had already stopped snowing when the victim was killed? There's no snow on the body. So that has to be it. Ultimately, it all comes down to one point. That being, whether or not it was snowing in the courtyard when the victim was stabbed. That's right, but proving that is... Incredibly easy. I still feel like my tracks photo should have covered this. But oh well. If we want to know whether it was snowing or not, this photo will tell us everything. Of course, I am referring to the photo of the crime scene. As you can see, everything is covered with snow. With just one exception. And that is? The victim herself, Miss Elise Dunham. Why is there no snow on top of her? The answer is simple. It had stopped snowing when she was killed, that's why. <laughs> In other words, if the killer really did go to the Eagle River to dispose of the murder weapon, then in this photograph there should be two sets of tracks. Yeah. Order! Order! Just what are you- yeah. Just what are you suggesting, Miles Edgeworth? To be honest, I'm not entirely sure myself, but this is simply what all the facts point to. That night, someone used the snowmobile to leave Hazakura Temple. From the tracks left, it can be understood that they were heading for Dusky Bridge. At that time, it was still snowing. Of course it was, because those tracks were erased by the snow. Then when this person returned to Hazakura Temple, the snow had stopped. Thus, the return tracks remained. Hmm. Can I say something? This all sounds a bit fishy to me. What is, sister? There is only one key for the snowmobile. Furthermore, on the night of the question, we know that the defendant had it. The key was found in her room after the murder. Which can only mean that night, Iris used the snowmobile to go to the inner temple. But Iris said that she never went there. I should probably press on this point some more when I get the chance. The snowmobile can't cross the suspension bridge, so she must have left it on, on the, the Hazakura side of the bridge and crossed on foot. That sounds right. But what's odd is, when I left Iris and returned to Hazakura Temple, I didn't see anything near Dusky Bridge. Y you must have just failed to see it, sister. Maybe, but when I made it back to Hazakura Temple, it was there, by the main gate. The snowmobile, I mean. I know what I saw. It was covered in snow, too. But, but that... Is it possible? Somebody's framing Iris. Order! Order! Order in the court! What does this all mean? Ugh. So then, what was the snowmobile used for? It wasn't taken by the defendant when she went to the Anna Temple. If it had been, then the witness couldn't possibly have seen it by the gate. Furthermore, it wasn't used by the killer to dispose of the murder weapon. 
If that was the case, there should be two sets of tracks in this photo. All we know is this. After it stopped snowing, someone used the snowmobile to return to Hazakura Temple. Hmm. And we still don't know where Pearly is! I never thought a simple snowmobile could cause so much trouble. I think we've learned all we can from this witness. Yes, yes, I have nothing more to add. I've told you everything, everything that I know. But then, that still leaves us with the same problem. If only there was someone, a witness who could testify to have seen the snowmobile. A witness, huh? Was there no one out walking perhaps near Dusky Bridge on that night? I don't think that's likely. He was cold enough to freeze your ears off. Only an idiot would go out wandering in that. Unless they had something really important to do. Hmm, that's a shame. Hold on. Something's coming to me. An idiot may well have gone wandering on that subarctic night. Your Honor! Actually, there might just be one individual who may be of help to us. B really? You know of someone who might have seen the snowmobile on the night of the murder? I don't know for sure if he saw it or not, but there are two things about him that do come to mind. Which are? First, that he saw something incredible on the night of the murder. And that second being? This individual that I am thinking of went wandering outside on that cold night. In other words, he is our kind of idiot. Mr. Edgeworth, who is this idiot you're talking about? Well, we obviously know him. He's Larry Butts. This guy must be product of Jean-Luc Deluc's guide to obnoxious French painting. This is Larry Butts, a disciple of the victim Elise Durham. A student? Interesting. And why was he wandering a boot outside on the night of the murder? That's... I could tell them about his designs for Iris, but it may cost us his credibility as a witness before I even call him. Yeah, I wouldn't want to present it. He is, after all, an artist. He was, perhaps, searching for something in the snowy scenery that would move him. Although I cannot guarantee that this is the reason. And so, this unfortunate, unreliable-looking man, what exactly was it that he saw? I intend to extract that from him right here in this courtroom. Summon this youth as a witness immediately. I have no choice, do I? I believe he is in the gallery for this trial. It will not take long to summon him. Very well. Larry, you may have escaped me yesterday, but today I'm going to get everything out of you. The court will now adjourn for a 20-minute break. Miss Van Karma, please see to preparing the next witness. Understood, Your Honor. Good. Well then, court is now in recess. To be continued. Ba ba ba. And that only took us an hour to get through that testimony. Not bad at all. Granted, I did make a mistake because the game was like, proved to us that the snow stopped when the murder happened, and I thought, well, the thing. I kind of forget my reasoning already. I thought it was moving. February 9, 11.15. But before we continue, I'm just going to quickly get a refill on water. So, I shall be back in just a moment. Water attained. Now I guess we will talk a bit with Iris and see what she has to say about all this. Excuse me, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm not really sure what to say. Iris, we only have 20 minutes. There are two things which I need to ask you before we reconvene. All right. I'll help you in any way I can. First, about that night. You really didn't go to the Inner Temple, correct? The last witness claims you have met and talked with you in the training hall. Either you or Sister Bikini is lying. Mr. Edgeworth, is it, just as I, it is just as I said yesterday. Until the incident occurred, I was in my own room in Hazakura Temple. Very well. The second thing, then? That night, the temple snowmobile was used in between the time Sister Bikini returned to the main hall and when she bore witness to the murder. 
Sometime between 10.30 and 11 p.m. that night. Were you the one who used the snowmobile? There's only one key for the snowmobile. The only person who could have used it was me. So it was you, but why? What made you go out into Dusky Bridge? I'm sorry, Mr. Edgeworth. Mp, more Cyclops. And they're heavy too, five of them. Iris. I can't tell you about that yet. Yet? Not until her safety is confirmed. Huh? The safety of the Acolyte. The Acolyte, huh? She must be talking about Maya. But... Uh, but we can't, we need to know the knowledge, man! We need to know the knowledge! Why is everybody locked up with five bibbidi bob blocks this day? Iris, look me in the eye and tell me the truth. Did you kill Elise Dunham? No matter who or what may come, I could never take a life. As I thought, no psycho locks. Very well. It is my job to get to the truth. You'll discover this for yourself soon enough. And that conversation took 20 minutes, apparently. He must have been staring at those psycho locks for a long time. And now Larry is going to be in this court once again, but in front of a new job, a new job, a new judge this time. Court will now reconvene. Miss Von Karma, where is the witness? During the break, a man was detained for suspicious behavior in the gallery. Suspicious behavior? He was sketching something very intensely. Dare I ask what the witness was sketching when he was detained? He drew a terrifying woman armed with a demonic face and a vicious whip. I can only presume that his intention was to capture you. Anyway, it's time to drag this pathetic excuse for an artist before the court. Loris Dunham, I hope you're ready. Get in here! It would seem that whip is going to see plenty more use today. Ouch! Your sketch is in contempt of this court. Hey! I was just artistically rendering. Ouch! You tried to run away from the bailiff who was trying to hand you your subpoena, Kirk. But look, I'm nothing but a fledgling artist training out in the mountains. I'm only down here in the city because I ran out of green paint. Well, they use a technical term for the color Viridian. Larry, this isn't an art stool now, is it? I know, I graduated junior high, okay? Look, art is all about working in the fields, isn't it? Working in the fields? I presume he wanted to say field work, I hope. But that's it. Thanks, buddy. It's kind of sad that I was able to understand his mangled train wreck of a sentence. I just happened to stop in here and found a wonderful new model. See? I've got nothing to do with this trial at all. I expect all your faces to be red when you realize this mistake. Bright red. Or, to use the technical term, Crimson Lake. <laughs> Ouch! Ow, ow, ow! Ow, stop it! Stop your pathetic blabbering and testify like a man. Refrain from whipping me, Miss Von Karma. Cross, cross whipping is as bad as cross checking. Witness that it was you all your fault testifying now. Well, this is too much for me. What did you see, little man? I was at the lodge out in the mountains, looking up at the stars that night. I walked to the bridge a number of times, but I didn't see a snowmobile. I didn't see anyone at the bridge that night either. So, like, <laughs> did he just out himself? Because I don't think we brought up a snowmobile to him yet. Well, then again, he was, like, in here, I suppose. I didn't see anyone th at the bridge that night either. The girl I was waiting for didn't show up. My teacher died on me. I'm all alone now. Aren't I edgy? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm surprised she's even allowed that thing. Because it's Japanifornia, anything goes in these, in these courts. I wouldn't be surprised if they let one of these prosecutors have a gun to point at people. Witness, please refrain from talking directly to the lawyers during your testimony. I'm just a nobody. Nothing but a small worthless man, aren't I? And why wasn't I asked for my name and occupation or anything else? 
Mr. Edgeworth, this man seems to have quite a severe inferiority complex. He's really, he's recently been on the case of numerous incidents. I think he's finally realized for himself just how much of a nuisance he's been to other people. Yeah, that's right, I'm behind everything, every case. Watch out, okay? Just touching me will make you eternally unhappy. Well then, let us proceed with the cross-examination. With no touching, thank you. We can delve into other details at a later time. One thing definitely pointed, uh, like, uh, like, stuck out to me. And that was, I didn't see anyone at the bridge that night. We know that to be untrue, right? Because it, it's just like, dude, my man, you didn't see anybody at the bridge that night? You didn't see anybody at the bridge that night? You literally saw Phoenix. We played as him. So I believe that's the cut and dry diddly D. I pressed the wrong thing because I'm a fool. Objection! You saw him that night, you fool. Larry Butts. I can understand why you might want to throw your old life away. You're pretty pathetic and you cause all sorts of trouble. I'm sorry. But having realized just how much of a nuisance you have been, that could be considered a step in the right direction. Edgy, are you trying to console me? It certainly doesn't sound that way to me. However, I cannot forgive you for simply turning away from the incidents you create. What? Uh, you're totally pinning this on me. Now then, let us talk about the night of the murder. Sister Bikini, after seeing the murder take place, asked Phoenix Wright to report it. Thus, he headed for the public phone by the bridge. There he happened across a certain nefarious individual. You, Larry Butts! That's right, me in the flesh. Hmm, listen carefully, witness. It doesn't matter if you change your name. So long as you remain pretty pathetic, you will continue to cause these incidents. That reality will not change. But what do you want me to do then? Larry, when you, what you need to change is your inner self. But for now, what you saw that night, testifying truthfully about this one issue is all I need from you. Edgy, I... I think I've finally woken up. Well, I guess I could still be sleeping. But anyway, I'll do it. I'll testify. Well, I'm not sure this will go especially well. <laughs> He's a madman. What, do you, what did you see on the night of the murder? What I saw part two. I don't even... Th we barely brought up that he saw Phoenix Wright and that he, like, lied. You're a weird little man. I went to the shack at around 9, so it would have been about 10.30 p.m. I was lying under my bedding when a white flash almost blinded me. You had your face facing out the door? That seems suicidal. I looked out the window and Dusky Bridge was on fire. There was still some thunder, but I went right away to check it out. That's when I ran into Nick. Hmm, you certainly saw quite a lot, didn't you? So, what happened to the breach after it caught fire? It was like me after a three-day stint chasing a girl. It totally burned out, like almost totally gone. I mean, trying to cross the burning remains was what caused Nick to fall. What did you say? Oh, don't worry, it's nothing life-threatening. He just caught a cold. I never know with that man if he... I never know with that man if he should be called lucky or unlucky. Now, Mr. Edgeworth, please commence your cross-examination. All right, let's look over the things. I went to the shack at around 9, so it would have been about 10.30. A bit weird, but I don't think we need to press. I was lying under my bedding, but a blight flash almost landed me. I looked at the bridge, and the bridge was on fire. There was still some thunder, but I went right away to check it out. Hmm. Let's see... Well, I guess we'll press on this one just to get maybe a bit more information. What did you do out there in the cold for an hour and a half? Well, if you really must know, I was busy being excited, I guess. Hmm, excited. Did I even ask? I said the meeting time is 10 p.m., right? But I couldn't wait, and I thought she might come early, too. Well, it appears she didn't come at all in the end. 
because they never arranged to meet in the first place, did they? Shut up! Don't go picking up my part, my fond memories! Anyway, I was getting a little worried. I thought maybe Iris had lost her way. So every 20 minutes or so, I went out to the bridge. But I didn't see anything particularly suspicious. I didn't have anything else to do, so I went back to the shack to wait for her. And then it's... Maybe this one. There was still some thunder. Because let's see. Line on my bedding, don't care. I looked at the original fire. I think this one, let's press on this one. Because I feel like we'll get more out of it. You said right away, but exactly how long after the strike was that? <sighs> the lightning fell, and then the bridge caught on fire. Maybe around five minutes? I mean, I suddenly thought, gotta go check this out. How far is this small shack from where uh, you were in from the bridge? Hold on, well, uh, it pretty much stopped snowing. I guess about five minute walk? And how did Dusky Bridge look when you got there? Like I'd recovered a piece of my childhood. I mean, not even the bonfires kids make during school camping trips can compare. Well, should I press him for a little more info? Hmm. Why did you go to the bridge? We already know. But, hmm. Why didn't you call anyone, I say? Larry, let me ask you one thing. What is it, Edgy? What's with a serious face? Why didn't you call anyone? Huh? What do you mean? Normally... When faced with a towering inferno, one would try to call someone. There is a public phone right by Dusky Bridge, correct? Well, of course I thought of doing that. So then, let's hear why you didn't. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay, a reason. My reason. It isn't that I didn't try to tell anyone, I just didn't have time to, okay? I arrived at the bridge and Nick showed up less than a minute later. Hmm. He told me about the, oh, I accidentally pressed forward. Meh. He told me about the burning bridge yesterday, but there's still something that doesn't quite fit. It looks like, despite his change of heart, Larry still isn't telling us the whole truth. Hmm. So I'm going to say that we should. Oh, I, I did it again. I thought I, my brain just thinks that there's more to this testimony than there actually is. Hmm. Dusky bridge was on fire. There was still some. So a five-minute walk. And then a minute later, Nick showed up. Okay, let's check the weather data, I think. Snow, 7 to 10.50. Lightning, 10 to approximately 11. Lightning struck Dusky Bridge at 10.45. Around 30 minutes passed between the fire starting and going out. But the murder occurred around 11. And Phoenix only went there after stumbling upon Sister Bikini. And that was like a 20-minute walk. So I think I think we just present the weather data. I think so. Objection! Your very existence being a contradiction, I'm not sure if you can grasp this or not. But what the hey, Edgy? You make me sound like some sort of alien. But your testimony is conclusively contradictory. The problem here is time. I've never been the best timekeeper, you know? Three minutes after Billy leaves on foot, you follow him on your bicycle. How long does it take for you to catch up with him? Terrible at those. This is a much more simple one. You saw the lightning strike Dusky Bridge and immediately went to see what happened. Is this correct? Yeah, well, I wasted about five minutes at first, but more or less. I have the weather data from the night of the murder here. According to this, the lightning fell at 10.45 p.m. You say it takes less than five minutes from the shack to Dusky Bridge, meaning you probably got there at around 11. That all sounds about right, I guess. And then Nick showed up and did his falling act. That is impossible. What do you mean? 11 p.m. is when the murder occurred in Hazakura Temple. Thus, Wright was still there in the courtyard. There's no way that Larry could have encountered him at Dusky Bridge at that time. Ah, uh, excuse me. I have an objection. You do? Edgy, how many times do I have to say this? I'm not Larry. I'm Lori Studham. Yeah! It has not been proven that the murder occurred at 11. This is the only set around 11. In which case, it could have been earlier than that. 
Watch your footing there, Miss Franziska von Karma. The slope ahead is slippery. So there's still no way that Wright could have been at Dusky Bridge at 11. And why not? It is clearly written here in the weather data report. It took around 30 minutes for the bridge to burn down. Therefore, the bridge must have been burning at at least 11.15. Which means, what exactly? Wright did not see the bridge while it was being consumed by the flames that night. In fact, he did not arrive on the scene until the flames had died down. Huh. That's not what I was getting at at all, but okay, sure. Larry, you arrived at the bridge at 11 p.m., but Wright did not make it there until at least 11.15. I suggest you stop hiding things and just tell us the whole truth. Now then, what happened during these missing 15 minutes? I... I... I feel like I just got brutally woken up by a toilet splashback. I guess I was still sleeping after all. <laughs> Pinch me! Larry is just an insane man. And I missed what he was saying. Order! And then he got slapped. So there was a missing 15 minutes prior to meeting Phoenix Wright. I hardly see this as much as a problem. Yeah, not much of a problem at all. Really? The bridge is burning before your eyes and there is a phone right next to it. Why then did you not report the accident? Yes, witness, why didn't you? Were you there simply to watch the bridge burn? And therein lies the problem. For even after the bridge had burnt out, he was still there. Staring into space, this witness didn't even attempt to fulfill his civic duty. That's what it sounds like. Ah, but this is Larry we are talking about, and even he is incapable of being so stupid. Which means there has to be a reason for his inaction. Edgy, I think it's about time I got serious with you, dude. Just as I thought, you've been playing with us all this time. Listen, I'm... I'm gonna tell you everything. Are you sure you want to hear it? Yes. I may really say it this time. Come on! Didn't say it. Very well, I have a terribly bad feeling about this, however. Let's have the witness finally give us the whole truth. Now, for this 15 minute gap, what were you doing, witness? I don't think Larry is capable of being serious. I'm a dunno. I'm an artist. What do you think I was doing? Sketching in front of the bridge. I was whipped up in a frenzy of art. The shock and all that I was feeling, I transferred it all directly onto the page. Before I realized it, the flames had gone out, and then he came up running. Hmm. I suppose artists can be a strange folk. That's right. I'm willing to sacrifice everything in order to draw the perfect sketch. Including the truth from the sound of it. Mr. Edgeworth, has this removed the last of your doubts? Not at all, Your Honor. One very large doubt still remains. Then what would that be? This is a surprisingly believable story, especially considering the source. So why did he think he needed to hide it from us until now? I intend to drag the reason out of him. <laughs> You'll regret this, Edgy. I don't think we will. You're a madman. You are a madman, little Larry boy. I'm a Dunham. What was you think I was doing? I think we should press on this, because, like, this one holds nothing. This one, let's click. So sketching the burning bridge. The burning bridge and everything that came with it. What came with it? You want to hear this from my lips, do you, Edgy? You'll regret this. The sketch of mine is... Enough. Just take that ridiculous sketch of yours out already, witness. But, 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 but what are you talking about? I don't know what, you're ta what you mean. That does indeed appear to be the fastest solution. I'll leave it to you, Mr. Edgeworth. What should I do? I've got a terrible feeling that the instant this sketch is revealed, the entire world may be changed by what is depicted there. I guess look at the sketch, I suppose. Larry, I wonder if you could show us your sketch, please. Well, well, 
Even I couldn't have imagined it turned out like this. Imagined what? That Larice Dunham's debut would take place here today like this? Yo! <laughs> Show it now! Okay, but steal yourselves. This is the world of Larice Dunham! Okay, not a bad sketch, I suppose, but what the fuck? Why is there a flying lady who is on fire? Ah, um, well, so this, this is Dusky Bridge, correct? Quite a large bridge, isn't it? Your response, Miss Von Karma. Yes, well, it's a better time than I expected. Isn't it, isn't it? I struggled to reproduce those flames, I really did. Yes, I'm sure you did. This is going to get ugly. No one has the courage to bring it up, it seems. This mysterious flying object. Larry? What? The burning bridge is fine, but what is that unfortunate looking figure? Ah, you spotted that. I thought you might. However much I might want to ignore it, I can't. It's Iris, of course, it's Iris. I wish she'd taken care of, better care of herself. We have to plan our future, you know. What would have happened to her if she had injured herself flying like that? Larry, please answer this next question honestly. Okay. Are you really claiming to have seen this? Are you claiming to have seen the silhouette of the defendant flying over a bridge that was engulfed in flames? How would you even argue that? What does this even mean? What does this mean? What? 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 What the fuck? What? <laughs> I'm very confused. I am very... Yep, that's what I saw. That's why I drew it. I'm an artist, a real artist. Uh, you? Hi? <laughs> Did this game actually, actually use the term? Are you high? <laughs> that, 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 that is hilarious. That, the girl. She's really high up in this picture. <laughs> they actually use the term, are you high? That is hilarious. Blah! What was that for? This is all a bad dream. I was hitting you on the cheek to test the theory. Please whip your own cheek from now on if you wish to test your wild theories. Anyway... No court of law will ever acknowledge that people can fly. Actually, there is some precedent for this. She was flying pretty high, my sweet Iris. She was about 30 feet above the bridge, at least. It was really something to see. This has to be some kind of mistake. Mr. Edgewood, please bring the witness back down to Earth. What? Me? This witness is your friend, is he not? Accessory to foolishness, Miles Edgeworth. Let us get back to the cross-examination by force, if necessary. Mr. Edgeworth, I expect you to expose the obvious contradiction here. Y yes, Your Honor. Looks like I've got another reason to remember this moron. Well, what did you think of my debut piece? Get that thing away from me. <laughs> Hilarious. Now hurry up and cross-examine him. He is just not at all in it. Now it's just like... Hmm. Well, let's see. I saw Iris, her... I saw Iris flying her white hood? Well, first I want to see. I thought that was her hair, but I guess it could be her diddly D, but it couldn't have been her hood because... We have her hood. And she was seen without her hood by the sister bikini. Larry, what did you really see that night? Not that I particularly care. <laughs> In your position, that's just being irresponsible. I, I drew exactly what I saw. I'll give you a whole dollar that it's the truth. If that is truly the case, then there is one thing we can say for certain. What might that be? That the person who flew over the bridge could not have been the defendant Iris. 
What? What do you mean? I don't understand. Ugh! A foolhardy folly of a foolish statement by an equally foolishly foolhardy fool. How exactly can you make this claim? Tell us, Larry. According to this picture, the individual whom you say you saw was wearing a hood, correct? Of course she was. That rundown shack is quite away from the bridge. The hood is what told me that it, this floating angel was my iris. The hood is my darling iris, and iris is my darling hood. What? <laughs> It seems that there's a bigger fool in this world than the one that the fence is bench. Larry, there's something you need to be made aware of. On the night of the murder, Iris wasn't wearing her hood. She had given it to Wright as a gift. Are you going to change your story now? Perhaps suggest it was Wright who took flight? That rhymed. What are you talking about? I think you understand what I mean just fine. Why? Why did Nick have Iris's hood? What? Itchy! What's going on with Iris and Nick? Why you Nick? You dog! <laughs> of course he focuses on that. I do believe that the unbelievably mysterious sketch is destined to disappear, discredited and discarded straight into the garbage. Huh. <laughs> What is it now, witness? It feels like I've been waiting 25 years for this very day to come. Edgy, today is the day I get to completely stupefy you. What? Chaotic, indeed. This is a crazy thing. Well, let's see, how are you gonna stupefy us? What is the meaning of your outburst, witness? I hate to have to do this, but I have some definitive evidence. Definitive? Evidence? Iris did indeed come flying over the bridge. And I, Laurie's Dunham, shall prove it. And how are you going to do that? I didn't expect to ask this again, but we shall be needing your testimony once again. Tell us anything you all know concerning the defendant as depicted in this sketch, and show us your evidence that this nightmare was actually a reality. Okay, I hope you're ready, Edgy. Because I'm gonna feed you a whopping serving of pain! You've been serving us a whopping serving of pain this whole time. Trust me. Proof that Iris flew! When I reached Dusky Bridge, she was already gone. I was so worried, so I frantically searched all over for her. That led me to finding a beautiful crystal sp What? Larry? Larry? Larry, why didn't you present the... You're... Here. Here. Larry, you are a great A moron. Half buried in the snow. I'm sure that Iris was simply wearing a spare hood. After all, no one else could have lost a crystal sphere that night. And how do you know she had the crystal sphere? A crystal sphere? This one. Pretty, isn't it? But finders keepers. That sphere, where did you find it? Let me see, around here somewhere? Looks about right. And it was half buried in the snow. It had pretty much stopped snowing by then, but there was still some falling as I walked up to the bridge. Hmm, the court accepts this crystal sphere. That's mine, okay? I want it back afterward. Hmm, there's something on it. Oh my, there's blood! What? Blood? Found half buried. Well, we already know what this is. This is the sphere that goes on top of Iris's... Well, not Iris. Uh, Elisa's staff. I just keep, I keep mixing up mystic names. It just keeps happening. You ready, Edgy? By tomorrow morning, you'll be calling me Master Larry. Yeah, I like the sound of that. No one's going to be pushing me around anymore. Wouldn't you want to be called Loris Dunham only a few minutes ago? <laughs> Well, 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 on we go, I guess. When I reached Dusky Bridge, she was already gone. I was so worried, so I frantically searched all over for her. That led me to finding a beautiful crystal sphere half buried in the snow. I'm sure that Iris was simply wearing a spare hood. After all, no one else could have lost a crystal sphere that night. 
It doesn't say it's dry. I think it's kind of implied. It would be very weird if, like, Larry bashed someone over the head with the thing. It would be very weird. After all, no one else could have lost the Crystal Sphere that night. Um, I do believe that this is where we present this because obviously it goes on the victim's staff. Or, the, or should we show the victim's, or the, the picture of Elise? I'm going to show the picture of Elise. Because I think this would more clearly be like, hey, she had the sphere. Then again, maybe the game would have been kind and linked everything together, so it's either either the staff or the photo, but I want to play it safe, because uh, you never know. Games aren't perfect. Larry, that night, there was someone. Someone who lost a crystal sphere. Th there was? Who? Who is this stupid idiot? Miss Elise Denham, the mentor to a stupid idiot. The victim? I have a photo of her here. And on the end of her staff, you can see a familiar-looking crystal sphere. Hey! That's my photograph! Give it back! Wow! The crystal sphere lock button is quite easy to find. I have one just like it on my brooch. They look nothing alike! In any case, please take a look at this. This is the victim's staff, found at the scene of the crime. Ah! The crystal sphere! It's gone! What? 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 D just what does this mean? If anyone jumped or flew across the bridge that night, it certainly was not Iris after all. She was not wearing her hood, more importantly. The crystal sphere found at the landing site was not hers either. And like... Also, the timing would be weird, right? Right? <laughs> Plus, who you, like, if the only person who could have used the snowmobile was Iris, why would she need the snowmobile if she could fly? None of this makes sense. That means the one who flew and dropped the spear was the victim, Miss Elise Dunham? <laughs> A fool alongside another fool on a fool's errand to reach a foolish conclusion. First of all, this sketch, which I prefer to call a squibble, is ridiculous. People cannot fly, thus it is rejected. You can't do that! I saw it with my own two eyes! In this crystal sphere, this is nothing more than a red herring. Do you honestly believe that? Give it some thought and I'm sure you'll realize it well, Mel Sedgeworth. At least Dunham was in her room on the night of the murder. There is no reason for her to go to Dusky Bridge. Therefore, this fear cannot be related to this case. That is all. Miss Franziska von Karma. The only people who will accept that explanation are scatterbrains and clowns. Why are you pointing at me? The victim's crystal sphere was found near the bridge on the night of her murder. Yet you expect us to believe that this has nothing to do with the case? This crystal sphere. It was probably thrown away at the bridge after the murder. After the murder? There is blood on the crystal sphere, isn't there? This naturally suggests that it was thrown away after the murder took place. The killer placed it there to throw the investigation off the scent. Which is the exact same reason why he threw that ridiculous sketch. You, you are going to claim that... <laughs> You're claiming that Larry's now the murderer, but there's no anything at all. Like, first off, there's no real reason for Iris to have killed Miss Dunham. No motive there. And sure, there is some evidence that could have been it, but like, why was there blood flecked clothes in her room and not disposed of? Why was the key to the snowmobile in her room and not like done away with to throw off the scent it feels very set up and now you're claiming that larry killed elise and placed the sphere there but then picked it up and owned it what well let's see what you're getting at you mean i'm the killer no <laughs> what although it kind of does make sense because it's kind of a bookend in a way it's a bookend <laughs> that's kind of funny uh, in the beginning of the game, he was dating a model, 
and she died. He was accused of the murder. Now this time, he is an artist who could use a model, and now he's being accused of murder. All joking aside... Oh, that was a joke, was it? Just when did this crystal sphere appear near the foot of the bridge? Unless this can be proven in some way, I refuse to believe this is related to the case. I don't think you get the... Like, I don't think she does make a valid point. Like, sure, there is the thing of when was it found at the bridge could be important, but it still is an important thing. It was at the bridge. Larry got it. He was never at the murder scene. She makes a valid point. There is no evidence that Elise Denham left Hazakura Temple that night. However, somehow this crystal sphere can be proven to have been dropped before the victim was killed. Then this case is going to transform into something else entirely. Your response, Mr. Edgeworth. I want your final opinion on the disposi disposition of this crystal sphere. If it is not related to the case, then this witness who you called will have been nothing more than a monumental waste of time. Prepare yourself for some very appropriate punishment, Miles Edgeworth. Can I prove it? Can I prove that the crystal sphere was dropped before the murder took place? I feel like we have to press yes, because we need, like, let's just say yes, I suppose. Can I prove it? That isn't the issue. To simply prove it, that's the only option. And that's what he'd do. <laughs> that's the way Phoenix Wright would do this. By the seat of his pants, he would prove the impossible. Your Honor, allow me to prove something to you. I will prove that this crystal sphere is a vital link to solving this case. You will do what? That look in your eyes. You remind me of Phoenix Wright when he is cornered. That should come as no surprise. Because right now, I am Phoenix Wright, and I am indeed cornered. <laughs> Amazing. I order you to present your evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. Evidence that proves that the crystal sphere was indeed dropped before the murder. Now the question is, what do we do? Hmm. Found half covered in snow, and then like maybe the crime scene photo. Let's look at that. Wait a minute. Because this, this photo is what we used to prove that the snow had stopped falling by the time of the murder. Found half covered in the snow. Did the game literally just show me the, the answer? Well, let's click it. This crystal sphere, it was half buried in the snow, correct? That's right. If, I, if it hadn't stopped snowing, then it would have been game over. The snow would have totally covered it. That's all I needed to hear from you, Larry. Your testimony makes one thing quite clear. What? When the crystal sphere was dropped, it was snowing. Even if it was ever so slightly. Snowing? On the other hand, let us look at the scene of the murder. As proven earlier today, there is no snow on the victim's body. Ah! Therefore, the crystal sphere must have been dropped before the murder. What? What? That was a very breathy walk, but what did I do? Order! 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 On the night of the murder, the victim did indeed go to Dusky Bridge. And there, something occurred that caused the staff's crystal sphere to come loose. What? What could that have been? This sphere. There is some blood on it, isn't there? Allow me to raise a certain possibility at this junction. The real crime scene was near the foot of Dusky Bridge. The murder didn't take place in Hazakura Temple Courtyard? Only a fool would suggest such a foolish piece of absolute foolishness. Just who is the fool? And which part is so foolish, Miss Von Karma? Have you been paying any attention this whole time, Miles Edgeworth? The sister saw everything. She saw the victim being killed by the defendant in the Hazakura Temple Courtyard. We've already been over this. 
she changed her testimony to say that she only saw the the sword drawn up to the hilt to be pulled out easily from the victim. It makes no sense. Why did we just forget that? Or are you going to bring that up now? And that's not exactly true, now is it? To put it more precisely, what she saw was the murder weapon being removed from the victim's body, and we also discounted the um, Shishihito as being the murder weapon, so meh. That's the same thing! No, it isn't. You said it yourself. Very little blood is actually lost at the moment of the blade's insertion. If you want to talk about when bl most blood would be lost from a body, that would be when the blade is removed. If that statement is the truth, then Dusky Bridge could very easily be the scene of the murder. The murder weapon was not removed, thus there was no bleeding. You are forgetting one vital thing, Mazajwurf. Elias Dunham's body was found in Hazakura Temple. I am on for to take 15 minutes to travel from Dusky Bridge to Hazakura Temple. You mean to suggest someone carried the body all the way? Snowmobile, snowmobile. I've made it this far. The only place to take this is to the end. I just need to prove that my version of the events is also perfectly plausible. Now if the defense is ready, the court would like to have an explanation. Please show us the method by which the victim's body was carried to Hazakura Temple. Tracks. On that snowy night, there's one way that a body could have been moved. The snowmobile. Ah! As we know, the snowmobile was used that night. It was explained as having been used to dispose of the murder weapon. But it could have also been used to carry a body. But then that begs the question of why didn't they just throw the body into the river? The, the murderer could have easily thrown the body into the river, but instead they chose to bring the body back and set up a scene. It's very weird. This, this is completely unacceptable, Miles Edgeworth. You've dug yourself into your own grave. What do you mean? The only one who could have used the snowmobile is the defendant. She is the one who moved the body. Doesn't that put the final nail in your coffin? <laughs> You're too late, Franziska von Karma. And in fact, the defense has so proven something else entirely. We have shown that this case requires further investigation. What? Where was the victim Elise Dunham really killed? If her body was moved, whatever for? And finally, just what does this image mean? Do you even need to think about that? Such a creature could never see the truth, let alone describe it. This witness certainly sits on one of the lowest plausible branches of humanity. However, he would never utter a line that could hurt a girl with whom he is enamored. He drew this, so it is something that actually happened. The defense stands firm on this point. Uh, edgy, thank you. That settles it then. I cannot give a verdict under these circumstances. <laughs> Francisca von Karma is mad. Right. It's, I seem to have fulfilled my part in this. It is just as I thought. Francisca von Karma, you make a wonderful partner. Excuse me? There was one reason and one alone for me being here. To expose the darkness lurking in this case, and then pass it on to right. But really? <laughs> That's what this is all about? You could have just told me that from the very beginning. And I wouldn't have had Francie with the... <laughs> Miles Edgeworth, I don't care about what you were here to do. This was my chance to finally grind you under my heel. A shame that your chance seems to have slipped you by. What a shame. A frenzy. This is all your fault. Such a terrible witness. You are an affront to all the legal system. I, dem I demand satisfaction. Wow. You murdered him. You rendered him unto atoms. I cannot believe that the witness's testimony relates to an actual event. However, there has to be some sort of answer for the question it raises. Have his words here today been the truth or lies? Next time we gather in this courtroom, those are the matters that shall be addressed.
I am counting on thorough investigations by both the defense and the prosecution. And with this, the rest is up to you, right? Court is now adjourned. <laughs> this is assault and battery. Ah, oh, but you see, she's a prosecutor, therefore she gets off scot-free. Kind of sad that we don't get to play as Edgeworth the entire way through. But I guess we'll continue a bit. We've only been going for two hours. We can go for like 30 minutes more, do a bit of investigating. Oh no, not the hottie clinic. Well, that explains why we're here. I'm still up at this hour, reading through the trial record of a certain case. It's the first case my mentor Mia Fey had ever handled in a court of law. The horrifying truth that I refuse to accept is holding me hostage here within its pages. Dahlia Hawthorne. What I have read, I don't want to believe. What is written here? This isn't the Dahlia I knew. After falling into Eagle River, I was somehow miraculously saved. But I ended up catching a cold that seemed to knock me around the world and back. I feel dizzy, my ears are ringing, my throat burns, and my head is on fire. But I will recover. I have to recover by this afternoon. I have to meet with the most ill-tempered witness imaginable. But I know that he will be able to help me with him. Somehow. Does this mean we're going to have Edgeworth as our, like, assistant? February 9th, 2.43 p.m., Dusky Bridge. Right, are you sure you're well enough to be doing this? You still look a little green in the face. Or maybe Viridian, in other speak. Actually, my fever has gone down quite a bit. How's your temperature now? Only 102.2 degrees. Nothing to worry about. I'm fairly certain that's close to melting your brain. Phoenix is being me right now. I stay up like a night owl. Ha! <laughs> Mood. <coughs> anyway, I read today's trial record. You weren't bad, Edgeworth. Pretty impressive despite the circumstances. We're not in the clear yet. The main point of contention tomorrow is going to be the murder weapon. Yeah. Me and the Shichi Shito did not deliver the deadly blow. Which means there must be another sword hiding about here that we don't know about. Another sword, huh? Don't you worry about a thing, pal. I'll dig up the murder weapon myself, or I'll leave my coat. Thanks again, Edgeworth. I'll handle things from here. <laughs> that is probably for the best. Actually, I was thinking about paying the old precinct a little visit. And there's something I want to look into. And that is... Our client's background. Naturally. You mean Iris, sir? I have the feeling that we've met before. All I want is confirmation. One way or the other. And since I probably won't be getting that from you. I'm sorry, Edgeworth. I bid you adieu, right? Take care. Sad. I wish that we could have had him as our partner. Guess I should get moving, too. Why? Do you need to be somewhere? Yeah, I gotta get to work on this bridge, pal. Derp. I'm rigging something up so we can get across to the other side. Ah, that's right! Maya's still stuck over at the inner temple. But don't you worry, pal. As soon as it's all set, you'll be the first to know. Thank you, Gumshoe. <laughs> <coughs> no problem, pal. Just try not to give me that cough of yours, okay? All right, I'm off. To be fair, it's not an illness cough, it is, uh, I fell into, well, it depends. Does a cough gotten from, like, falling into water and getting sick still, like, contagious? I don't know. Yeah. Hang in there, Maya. We'll get you out, I promise. But in the meantime, I've got to continue collecting evidence. That thing looks like it's ready to collapse. At least more than it did before. According to Bikini, Eagle Mountain is very prone to earthquakes. Which reminds me, if my memory serves me correctly, Edgeworth isn't exactly a fan of earthquakes. Yep, the first game. Now it really is more of a dusty bridge than a dusky bridge. That kidnapping incident happened here 11 years ago, so maybe it's cursed too. Kazakura Temple doesn't have a single private phone line, and there aren't any houses in the area, so I guess Bikini is the only one who uses it. I really wish I had brought my cell phone with me. That might have helped a lot of issues. 
There's a narrow path going on off in a different direction than the main hall. Then again, if he had his cell phone, he might have not come to the bridge and fallen through, which might not have put Larry on the stand. Right, so looks like someone's taken an effort to write to Heavenly Hall on the signpost. Well, let's go to Heavenly Hall. Looks like no one's here. Larry! Larice! I'm sure you'd be hiding somewhere. Guess I'll try again later. That is the game telling me to fuck off to the main bridge. Come on, please. Oh, wow, it's Larry. Please, it's for heart's sake, I swear. There's only one guy I know who could be this persistent and high strung. I'm talking about the heroine here. The heroine in my book, it'll make you famous. Yeah! Enough. A fool's 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 who's foolishly accept the foolishness of a fool's fool. Wouldn't you agree, Phoenix Wright? Huh? Uh, me? Wait a second. I, I know you. You're, um... Ow! Your reflexes and mine need to shape up. My brain's frying like a sunny side up and you want to grill me over a name? Brandy, you can't do that. Even as we speak, Nick's on the brink of death. Or so I'm told. We've a dead horse. Isn't that one of your American sayings? No, it's not. And I'm not on the brink of anything. Come on, Nick. Tell her, would you? Tell her she needs to model for my new picture books. Francie's whippity whip trip. Yeah! Before you ask me to model, learn to give at least semi coherent testimony. And before that, you'll have to learn how to live a semi coherent life, Larry. I don't care what anyone says. I'm telling the truth. I saw what I saw. She flew, I'm telling you. Whoosh! Just like that dude with the red underwear. Don't think I'm gonna forgive you guys when you come crawling back to apologize. And then he ran away. Phoenix is being me. Oh, I already read that. My, my brain is also on fire. Brain is baking. Ah, off he goes. And now we have Francisca. <laughs> it's amazing how little has changed with you in the past year, Phoenix, right? Have you been in Germany all this time? That's right. Extending my perfect win record naturally. Oh, joy. Sounds like she hasn't changed a bit. Has it really been a year since we first met? I am Franziska von Karma, the prodigy. I see. I gave up our promising career in Germany and came to this country for one sole reason. Revenge. Franziska was born and raised in Germany and became a prosecutor at the age of 13. Her father was the legendary prosecutor Manfred von Karma. He had a perfect win record for 40 long years. But now he's gone from this world. Don't tell me you still hold a grudge against me. Because of what happened to your father. Phoenix Wright, you will fall before me this, I promise. But it will be for my sake, not my father's. Are we clear? Yes, Crystal. In truth, I was shocked. I came back to America with the intention of defeating you. Instead, it was my little brother who was leading the defense. Edgeworth. Come to think of it, Edgeworth was pulled into being a prosecutor by Manfred von Karma as well. Miles Edgeworth told me something very interesting, you know. He said this case has a special significance to you. Because it does. And that's precisely why I'm here. Your personal involvement will make crushing you into teensy winty pieces all the better. But we definitely know that Godot is gonna burst back in the moment that he learns that Phoenix is involved again. It's probably the fever, but she's so openly hostile that it's almost kinda cute. Ow! No smirking! No whipping the sick! That foolish fool. Doing such a foolish favor for such a foolishly foolish fool. That's worse. Make no mistake, Phoenix Wright. I came here for one thing, and one thing only, to pulverize you. Although it'd be hilarious to see Godot and Von Karma kind of be together with Godot taking over as primary prosecutor, and she's just beside him, like his Maya, trying to butt in. That would be an amusing thing. Now I want a game where you play as Godot, and you have to deal with Franziska as a partner. <laughs> It's not like I thought you were here to bring me some cold killer X, you know. I went over the whole case file on the flight over. You read the whole thing? 
Yes, every last word of every last sentence of every last paragraph. All the ridiculous things you did made it a very interesting read, you know. I can't in the cross a burning breed. Did you even consider the dangers? No. The only thought in my mind was I have to get across. A fool who doesn't think he is more foolish than a fool who is foolishly thinks. Come through said he'd let me know once the bridge was repaired. Maya. She's gotta be okay, I just know it. Plus, I need to ask her about what really happened at the Inner Temple that night. You'd think that the case would be postponed to get Maya's testimony. Sure, I know that they'd be like, oh, we have to get it over in three days because of law, but I feel like there would be special exceptions where you can wait a decent amount of time if there is extenuating circumstances. I'd love to know what that thing was used for on the night of the crime. Huh, still thinking small, I see if it looks right. Or perhaps not at all. That's why you will never defeat me. Sorry to burst your bubble, but I don't recall ever losing to you. It's time for us to settle this once and for all with one final showdown. Looks like she mentally blocked out my victories over her from her memory. She did kind of just go, I don't, <laughs> that doesn't count. Let's do it again. This is one impressive gate. Compared to the grand you have the man get at the Von Kama estate, it is but a pet door. It looks really idyllic with all that snow on it, don't you think? All that snow? Don't make me laugh, this is but a light dusting where I come from. Don't make things up just because you think I'll never get to see it for myself. Oh, but Phoenix, you will never travel abroad. You are stuck in Japan, California. You can see the main hall from here. I wonder how to... Excuse me, come here. I wonder how the head of none is holding up. Oh, wow. Is that an inkling of human kindness, I sense? Wow! Do you enjoy causing other people pain with that sharp tongue of yours? Something compared to the pain you cause with that leathery whip of yours. I do kind of like that the... <laughs> that they're basically acting almost like friends here. It amuses me. It's a quaint little bell tower. I never would have thought that something this horrible would have was about to happen. When Iris rang the lights out bell that night. Ah, um, I was hoping for another... Like, interruption. Hmm. That was long, one long sigh. Where is Pearl? She's been missing for like two days. Um, Sister Bikini? My, my, my. I didn't know you were here. How are you doing? <laughs> um, uh... um, you don't have to pretend to be in a good mood for my sake. I... I suppose I've made a terrible mess of things, haven't I? I let Mystic Elise die, and then there's Iris as well. Mystic Elise? Now that I think about it, hmm. There's an acolyte stuck in the inner temple, and that poor little girl has gone missing too. That little girl? You don't mean pearls, do you? Yes, I'm afraid I do. She hasn't been seen since the morning after the incident. Pearls? She's missing? Why didn't anyone tell me about this? That's very unfortunate. I must be getting old. I think I've seriously lost faith in myself. Are you talking about your performance at the trial today? You believe me, don't you? I'm not a liar. I would never lie. I know what I saw. I saw Iris pull that sword from Mystic Elise's body that night. I'm certain of it. At least I was until this morning. I don't see any Cyclops, so she must be telling the truth. Um, so why are you so unsure of yourself all of a sudden? You know that artist who testified after me? I saw Iris flying! Her white hood fluttering! I felt like I might start flying myself. When I saw that man testify so fervently about something so impossible, I started to wonder if I had acted just like him when I was on the witness stand. I wouldn't take that guy too seriously. He's an artist, but all, the draws, all he draws is trouble. And nothing else. Both Bikini and Larry are telling the truth. It can only mean one thing. They both didn't see what they think they saw. On the night of the incident, you met Iris at the Inner Temple, is that correct? That's right. I'm sure it was Iris. But Iris claims she was he in her room in Hazakura Temple. And no psycho locks appeared. For also, I think I just noticed. I think Phoenix said psych locks. And, and Edgeworth only ever said Psycholux. That, that's amusing to me. 
I know I shouldn't have come back here that night. But because you did, Maya's stuck by all by herself at the inner temple. Uh, I'm so sorry. The drafts in the place are nothing to shake a stick at. Winter is especially bad. I'll bet the training hall looks like it's about to fall down any second. Eagle Mountain has always been prone to earthquakes, just so you know. Uh, earthquakes? But Phoenix, we already know this. You told us this. Phoenix. Phoenix? Phoenix, you told us this. You informed us of this. How can you... Are you are you being dumb, Phoenix? Hey, Phoenix. Phoenix, why are you dumb? Yes, I wouldn't be surprised if the next big one levels the training hall. Well, that's disturbing. That's disturbing. We've got to get Maya out of there. But still, there's really no need to worry. That area on the other side of Dusky Bridge is isolated like an island. It's like an island? How so? Well, the only thing on that side of the bridge is the inner temple. No one lives out there. It's surrounded on all sides by the river or the forest. I see. So a criminal would be trapped should they choose to flee in that direction. And as long as the bridge is out of commission, he or she would ha will have to stay there. That means Maya could be stuck out there with a murderer and with no way to escape either. Oh dear, yes, I suppose it does. Please, Gumshoe, get that bridge up faster. That's a horrifying thought. I'm curious about a few things, if you don't mind answering some questions. Oh, do you need to know of my measurements for your investigation or something? No, 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 no. I want to know a little more about the victim, Miss Elise Dunham. I'm afraid I don't know her waist size. Or her bus size, for that matter. No, no. I'm wondering why she came to stay in a place like this to begin with. I mean, she told us herself that she wasn't here for spiritual training. My, my, my. You make it sound like this place is some sort of dump, Mr. Wright. Mystic Elise was here to soak up the natural beauty of Eagle Mountain, if you must know. There. You did it again. Sister Bikini. I notice you always refer to Miss Dunham as Mystic Elise. Oh! Yes. Now, why is that? After all, she's not here as an acolyte. We address all our visitors as mystic. It makes all their experiences feel authentic. Uh, and anyway, she's older than me. You must respect your elders, you know. How do you know that? How can you say for sure that she's older than you? And here's the Cyclops. And they're deep. Huh. It seems Miss Elise Dunham was no ordinary visitor after all. And there's pearls. She was with Miss Dunham on the evening of the murder, and now she's vanished. It's all got to be connected somehow. But why did Pearls have to get mixed up in this mess? Please, Mr. Wright, I know you're worried, but try to keep it together. Oh, man. My head's throbbing so bad it's killing me. Pearls. She was m with Miss Dunham on the night of the murder, remember? Yes, but I have a temple to run, you know. I was busy preparing for the training. I didn't see the little darling even once after we'd finished eating dinner. The murder. It didn't take place right in front of her innocent eyes, did it? According to the detective, she hasn't turned up at her home either. Come on, keep calm. There's one place left where Pearls could be. She just has to be there. Come on, Gumshoe. Tell me you'll be done with the repairs soon. Yeah, I was thinking that. I didn't voice it, but I was wondering if Pearls might be on the island. Let's move on to the courtyard. And they still left the... the they still left the... the staff there for some reason. Huh. Also, that's a big-ass sword. I feel like that sword wouldn't have, wasn't isn't as big in the the memory. This is where Sister Bikini witnessed the incident. It's hard to imagine she was lying on the stand, so maybe there are some clues that may have yet to be found. Because again, there's this like outline thing here with that makes it feel weird. The main gate's on the other side of that stone wall. The difference in elevation is almost ten feet. That's how steep this hillside is. And that's also the height of the body fell from, according to the autopsy. Is it possible that Miss Dunham was pushed from the top of the wall? The Shichi Shito. It's there in Mystigami's right hand. But it was proven in court today that it wasn't the murder weapon. Given the design, it must have been used for, 
for some pretty gruesome things in the past. Miss Dunham's staff. I definitely remember there being a crystal sphere attached to the staff. I guess Larry eventually found the sphere near the foot of the dusky bridge, but what was it doing all the way out there? Is that it? There are a few of these stone lanterns scattered around in this courtyard. Without the city glare to compete with them, I imagine they would seem a lot brighter. I guess Sister Bikini must light them so uh, them now, since Iris can't be here. Sucks to be her. They get quite a bit of snow up here in, on Eagle Mountain. Around here, skis aren't just for fun. They're tools for getting around. But the sled? No, that's got to be for Bikini's own personal entertainment. That building up there is the main hall. It was where we were staying. It's just kind of funny because it was built on a very steep slope. If you enter from the main gate side, these rooms above me are on the ground floor. Apparently Miss Dunham was staying in the corner room. I guess that's where she was pushed from that night. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be anything else. Except for this bit, this outline. I wonder what it is. Because there doesn't seem to be anything else that we can clicky 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 on. Well, I guess let's move back. Oh! Hey! What was that jarring, inconsiderately loud yell? So this is where you've been. Keep it nice and warm, I see. Detective, have you finished the, the bridge? Yeah, I did. I told you I'd let you know. Well, well, well. Then I'll come along with you and... Sorry, ma'am. No unauthorized entry. Access is restricted to people involved in the case. What was that? I am involved, aren't I? You couldn't get much more involved than me. Well, yeah, but that's not what I mean. Oh! It's been a while, Scruffy. Hey, it's... Miss... Karma! He fainted, didn't he? Sister, please leave the investigation to me. My, my, my. Well, you certainly seem to have everything under control. I'm on your side. I won't do anything you don't want me to. As you work to pin the guilt on Iris. What are you daydreaming about Phoenix Wright? Oh, that hurts, you know. Silence. I, Francisca Von Camo, personally guide you through your investigation. So you will follow me. She's not seriously going to follow me around, is she? I hope it does, because this means that maybe we can go back to the courtyard. Although it's kind of hilarious. And, nope, doesn't seem like there was extra commentary added by her following us. Well, to the main gate. And a suspension bridge. Well, I guess that works. Interesting. Oh, uh, there's... Oh, there is, maybe. It looks like it's about 20 yards to that cliff over there, but I can't see the inner temple from here. I really hope Maya's okay. Well, let's get a move on. I guess to the inner temple gate. <laughs> Man, Vaughn is mean. Ain't she, ain't she? Things have certainly become a lot more hectic than before. They must have commenced with the investigation. Oh, Mr. Nick! Th that voice. Pearls! Mr. Nick! <laughs> Mr. Nick! How did you get here? So you were here, ever since that night. I was so lonely, I thought I was going to die. When I woke up in the morning and saw that Dusky Bridge was gone, I... I realized I was all alone. She was all alone? It must have been very trying for you, little girl. Ah, you're... And Francisca Van Kama, the prodigy. There's no need to worry now that I'm here. You're the prosecutor who was so mean to Mystic Maya last year. Well, I... I don't like you. You're nothing but a little girl with your without your whip. Ooh. Mystic Maya didn't do anything wrong, but you were so mean. I'll never forgive you. I... I... It looks like Pearl's words are getting under her skin. Ow! Why are you whipping me? I didn't even say anything. You didn't have to. The smile on your lips give you away. Anyway, Pearls, weren't you with Maya? Uh, I'm sorry. It's, it's all my fault. Huh? What are you talking about? 
Pearls? I... I... <laughs> Mystic Maya... Did you throw yourself off the bridge? Hey, wait! Pearls! She just ran off! <laughs> Ow! That was cruel, Phoenix, right? To make a little girl cry like that is inexcusable. What was that all about? Pearls acting like that? It's giving me the creeps. Wait a minute. Why is the incinerator, like, free? The incinerator was, like, super covered, wasn't it? What the hell? I guess I better take another look around since I finally got the chance. Especially since something about this place seems different from two days ago. Why is the robot free? There's a weird smell coming from the incinerator. The door's also open, almost like it's begging me to look inside. Well, well. Let's see what the stunning clue is concealed in here, shall we? Huh? It's empty! How naive of you, Phoenix Wright. But it's a bit strange, don't you think? Franziska von Karma? I seem to remember. Why is the snow cleared away? There was snow on this incinerator the first time I saw it. In other words, someone's been using it to burn something recently. Listen, Phoenix Wright. It's impertinent to call people by their full name. I was only copying you. It is a bit hypocritical. <laughs> Wait a minute, why... Oh, I'll touch on that after we read this. Look at all the Buddha statues lined up along this path. Phoenix Wright, do you think this is how many siblings the head nun has? Why don't you ask her the next time you see her? You know what? I think I will. And she'll probably slap you for prying into her private affairs. Where's the... the suspension beam? Phoenix Wright! What?! And would you stop calling me by my full name like that? Was this once a prosperous port? A port? Yes, that metal hook is a mooring post for boats, you know. Oh, that. That's an anchor for one of the wires that used to hold up the bridge. I think the wire that was tied to this one was probably snapped when the bridge burned down. I mean, there's no way there was ever a port all the way up here. Don't get smart with me, Phoenix, right? But I didn't see anything! Everybody is psychic <laughs> when it comes to Phoenix's mind. The sign says Inner Temple I don't know how you're reading it But it's incomprehensible to me Actually, I can't read it either Feigning comprehension isn't a very good habit to have, Miss Phoenix, right? She looks really happy to have finally caught on to something <laughs> There's a little gate that leads to the garden It says no entry on the sign, though Come now, Phoenix, right? What are you doing? Let's go in It's half open anyway What harm could come of it? But it says no entry don't you Americans enjoy doing whatever you like and then simply say, whatever? That's got nothing to do with anything! And who told you that? <laughs> but we probably should go into the garden. There's probably a very important thing in there. This must be the door that leads to the inner temple, where Maya Fey was training on the night of the murder. Yes, there's a solitary room he there called the training hall. You could do with some training yourself, Phoenix Wright. <laughs> You're completely out of shape. Uh, I don't know how much more of this woman I can take. Very interesting. Training hall. What the fuck? What's a psych... Okay, first off, weird sludge on the, the mystic Misty Fay picture. And a physical psych lock? What? What's wrong? Why are you so quiet? Maya. She was supposed to be in here training. Yet it appears she's nowhere to be seen. What's that? That strange lock. It wasn't there two days ago. This whole room is really giving off some strange vibes. First off... What do you think this yellowish poster is, Phoenix Wright? It's a scroll, not a poster. It's a picture of a woman who's actually... A woman? I don't see any woman here. There's a different atmosphere in this room since the last time I was here. No. It's not a different atmosphere, it's a different smell. It's gravy. What's the matter? This scroll. It's been completely covered in gravy. Ah, yes. There's a very appetizing smell in the air. But gravy is a type of sauce. So when you run out of paint, you Americans use gravy as a substitute, I see. No, no one does that. For starters, it stinks. 
must be the gravy that we had with the roast on the night of the incident. But why would anyone do this? Why, why this scroll? Interesting. The scroll shows a picture of Misty Fay, master of the curing channeling technique. But why would anyone cover it in gravy? I can't make out what's drawn in this scroll at all. I never understand you Americans and your so-called artists. Artists? Um, yeah. Look at those wafer-thin mattresses. I'm sorry, Phoenix Wright. Wafer-thin? Yeah, you know, thin like a wafer. In other words, uncomfortable. That's how we describe things like these mattresses. I guess you must say wafer-thick or something back in Germany. Not about these mattresses, certainly not. <laughs> it's an antique dresser. Don't you dare open it, Phoenix Wright. Now I know Maya <laughs> Now I know how Maya feels when I tell her not to touch things. What a pity. It's full of nothing but old clothes for the acolytes. I thought we weren't opening it. I'm from the prosecutor's office. I can do anything. Yeah, you can do anything. Except stand up to a nine-year-old girl. And now the psych lock. Hmm, this door. When I was here two days ago, that weird lock wasn't on it. Those chains. It's almost like they're guarding something inside that cavern. I've never seen a clock quite like this before. I have. I've seen locks and chains just like this before. They look just like the ones that guard a person's secrets during a psych lock. Like, was Maya doing her training and it happened so strongly that a psych lock physically manifested? Or did somebody else somehow manifest a psych lock over the, the door? Dark secrets in a dark cavern. What took you so long? I thought even you'd manage to get here faster th Oh! I thought even you'd manage to get here faster than this, Mr. Trite. P Prosecutor Godot! I didn't know you were here. Prosecutor? How come you didn't show up for the trial today? Ha! Huh. I could ask the same exact question for you. Huh? But I was... I had a cold, so... I had something slightly more important than a common cold to deal with. The importance of which is something you have no hope of ever understanding. Enough, I believe I have the measure of you. You're the very worst kind of prosecutor. What could be more important than a trial? Who's the wild man, right? This is Miss Von Karma. She was the acting prosecutor in your absence today. Ha! Well, I guess I owe you one then. But you can go now, princess. It's time for the big boys to take the reins. Just who do you think you are? This case is my... Hey, Philly. Know your role and shut your mouth. I can't stand women like you. I'm only going to say this once, Lady Von Wippenberg. Go away. Phoenix, right? What are you hitting me for? Ha! Huh. You deserve more cracks of the whip than that, Trice. What? You still don't get it, do you? You don't realize that you've set something in motion that you'll never be able to undo. There's something different about Godot today. I'm getting such a strong sense of something from behind that mask of his. Is it anger, or is it sorrow? This is odd. But I think we've gotten to a decent stopping point in terms of story. We've been going for two and a half hours, which I think is a decent amount of time. So, I do believe that we will be ending here today. Especially because we haven't really found anything super important just yet. Except for everything in this room. But very interesting that Godot has shown up and is acting different, apparently, and is mean to Von Karma. Very rude. But yeah, I'm just not understanding anything. A Cyclock is real in the world now. Somebody flew over the bridge. The murder apparently took place at Dusky Bridge. I have no... And again, like, why is there a grave in here? Why is it smeared over the poster? The scroll? Why did Pearl run away? What happened to Maya? I'm sure we'll figure all that out next time. But, yeah, next time should be the final time. We'll 
we should be able to easily go through the rest of this investigation and finish off the trial next time, more than likely. Next time, next Saturday. Well, not next Saturday, because next Saturday is more Pokemon Mystery Dungeon than next Monday would be the next Ace Attorney. But yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed what you saw, then yes, come back next Saturday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, in which we will be continuing Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky and hope that it doesn't crash again at the weird level transitions, but who knows? Still having a lot of fun with it. And if you want other things from me, I have an edited content YouTube channel called Neon Icy Wings that you can find while edited content. I'm currently working on a script. I hope to get it out at some point. <laughs> to give myself a little bit of leeway, I may be by March. The script is coming along long-winded. But as for streaming, I stream to both YouTube and Twitch, Neon Icy Wings on Twitch, and Neon Icy Games on YouTube. And then on the YouTube channel of Neon Icy Games, all these streams eventually get uploaded to for posterity and for just being able for people to watch them, because it's nice and fun to archive my experiences with these games. Other things you can... And oh yeah, I almost forgot. And all of these links can be found in my link tree, linktr.ee slash neonicewings. And the direct link to that link tree can be found in the description of YouTube, videos, link places everywhere else, bios, everything. Just where you would expect to find links, link tree will be there. Uh, links to my YouTubes and Twitch can be found there along with links to my art, writing, and Patreon. So if you want to see art like my little character in the corner, you can find it posted to various different sites. If you want to read stories I've written, resources plugged in there. And if you want to be kind and throw me a dollar do or so, you can do so through my Patreon to help me through the cold evils of the world ever so slightly. <laughs> yes, I like watching them. Everyone's run like a different experience. That is true. Because you get to see like how different people's minds work, where they go... If they have an easy time or a hard time, their thought processes, especially for games like Phoenix Wright. It's just an interesting experience to see. It's just very fun. It's a very fun experience. But yes, next time we play Ace Attorney, it will probably be the end for the Ace Attorney journey. Well, trilogy journey, at least. There's still the Apollo trilogy and a few other games. The bu -bu -bu crossover with, what's his name? He has a top hat. I almost had his name, but then it vanished from my mind. We might do that sometime. But, yes, next time it'll, we stream on Saturday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, it will be more Mystery Dungeon. So, we shall see, we shall see. Once again, thank you very much for watching, everybody. And I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.